It seems like this is now pouring out of the orifice of Mother Earth in response to an attempt by bankers to turn everything into a collateralized debt obligations traded by corrupt venture capitalists on Wall Street to fund their supersized 500 foot yachts. Government, a, a Bastiat quote, you talk about his essay, life, liberty and property are the things that government is there to ensure or to protect or yes. to help guide. OK, so there is yes. a role for government. I'm not an anarcho capitalist that says government. No government is just anar anarcho capitalism. I think that there is a role for governance uh, because governance is threaded throughout our lives. Sports has governance. There are umpires in baseball. You know, the natural mm. world has governance. The molecular the cohesion that keeps atoms together is governed by certain laws. The Bitcoin protocol is governed by the protocol. There's a governance model. Governance models are not the problem. The problem is that people who abuse their powers and use fiat money to create total chaos and mayhem and corruption. And uh, what he's saying very simply is we've got a governance here that's uh, pretty straightforward. And we are a country that has money enough to do the things that we guarantee for our citizens, life, liberty and property. And one of the things we're doing to ensure life, liberty and property is to get rid of the gangs, right? The gangs who, by the way, were exported from, for the most part, from from Los Angeles prisons. So. Uh, the money is there, you know, if, if you don't steal it, right? If you don't steal the money, there's plenty of money there. There's a society here. They're governed. They pay taxes. The government's got a kitty with a lot of money in it, and they're using that money to invest in the country, which encourages entrepreneurialism, which freed up $6 billion that was being extorted by the gangs. It's now in the economy, which has a knock-on effect. So everybody's got a 20% increase, like a tax raise. Now you've got the diaspora coming back. They they estimate 500,000 Salvadoran of diaspora coming back to uh, this country, which is another huge GDP, uh, GDP boost. And you just add it on, on and on. All you need to do is not steal. Just don't steal. It is uh, the end game of a Ponzi scheme. So the COVID lockdown triggered a massive layer on top of the Ponzi scheme. You know, the Ponzi scheme works because you have to keep printing more money to pay off the investors who are early in the Ponzi scheme. Yes. And so when you hit the COVID uh, crisis and there was a slowdown in, in international trade and you had a, a potential slowdown in the economy that would have triggered a collapse of the Ponzi scheme. You remember Bernie Madoff's Ponzi scheme collapsed because in 2008 there was a massive drawdown in the stock market and it revealed the fact that he was a, a Ponzi operator. He was a fraudster that had been going on for a long, long time. So in, 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 in the COVID crisis, there was a drawdown, there was a slowdown, which was revealing like the tide going out. Suddenly, as Warren Buffett would say, you know, everyone's naked and oh my God, there's a Ponzi. So to respond to that, they had to engage in um, such a massive quantitative easing like money printing bacchanalia of multi-trillion dollar that um, you had that money supply, 40% money supply increased 40% in a year, right? I think that's the most shocking increase ever, probably in history of any country ever in the sheer numbers of it. And the results are complete malinvestment, complete um, kind of wealth and income gap because it was it wasn't distributed in any way that was in any that, that as as Bukele points out, you know, there's plenty of money if you don't steal. Well, when they did that massive bailout during the COVID, there was a massive fraud, massive stealing. The PPP loan program was a massive fraudulent program. And you and I were watching all this unfold. And yes, it resulted in now we have this incipient uh, uh, inflation uh, a problem and uh, it's just rolling on top of each other on self. You know, the whole uh, journey of America is one of um, hard work and prudence and probity. Proof and of work. Proof of work. Now it's proof of stake. Now it's just proof of stake. And that transition uh, to proof of stake is now resulted in the country the entire country now looks like Madonna. Oh, it looks like it. Madonna at the Grammys. There's so many fillers, so much facelifts, so many manipulations. I mean, uh, this is what America now, Madonna is the, is the face of America because there's no accountability. There's no, there's no grounding to reality. It's like we can keep getting facelifts forever and let's not look in the mirror and let's pretend that this is not a grotesque def, def, deformation of the material girl from the 1980s. I mean, and, and this is in the United States. In the 1980s under Reagan, I guess that Reagan period was 
kind of a burst, bust out. The Cold War was over. Uh, America came out of the, the Berlin Wall came down. There was a feel good. The Top Gun movie came out. Let's uh, conquer the world. We won the end of history, according to Francis Fukuyama. Capitalism, Americanism won. And now here we are 40, 45 years later, and uh, it looks like Madonna. So it's, uh, remember in Raiders of the Lost Ark, when Indiana Jones gets into the temple, he does that switch, yeah. you know, yeah. and triggers the massive boulder chasing him. So yeah. that switch was done kind of a, starting in the 80s, uh, you know, with Reagan and deregulation, the introduction of derivatives, illicit derivatives. We've talked about this before, so let me just go down this rabbit hole once again, that all institutions in the United States, anything that throws off any kind of income was turned into a security and securitized and packaged by Wall yes. Street and gutted and traded and uh, deformed yes. and uh, this was the reconstitution of everything in the united states into a product sold and bought on wall street and commodified and securitized and this goes on for 20 30 40 years and it's all based on cheaper interest rates and the ability to extend maturity on the bond market. So uh, what happens now is that after 40 years of this, interest rates started going higher as they would do in a cycle because it's all very cyclical. And that uh, layer cake of fraud, everything that's securitized against securitized. FTX and Sam Bankman Freed is really a microcosm of the American story for the past 45 years. He took a fraudulent token, the FTT, and he used it as collateral to spin up layer after layer after layer of cross-collateralized, re-collateralized, rehypothecated layer cake of holographic proportions of nonsense, and then it collapsed. Right, the interest on the, on the debt in America now is approaching $1 trillion, just the interest. When I started on Wall Street, I believe the entire debt of the country was like a trillion dollars. Yeah, yeah. Now here we are 45 years later, and the interest on that debt is a trillion dollars. And so the millennials and the Gen Z and the up and coming generations are experiencing complete future shock that the inflation is real because of all that money printing and borrowing. The economies are been exported abroad to create derivatives, to reward people in the instant. The baby boomers, of which I am, took all that cash at the expense of all these other generations. Yeah. And um, so Paul Krugman would still say that debt doesn't matter and we should just uh, ignore the debt. And of course, everyone in Washington, D.C., and you talked about the State of the Union address, they still believe that this is just a, you know, I believe, I only saw like six seconds of it, but I believe they were banging the table on infrastructure again. And of course, they're going to be like, let's go into debt by five or 10 or $20 trillion more to do infrastructure. And of course, get that interest payment on the debt to two or three trillion. And that's called a currency collapse. And that's where we're at in the cycle for the so dollar. We did the consumption, the baby boomers consumed uh, you know, 50, 60, 100 years worth of consumption in 10 or 20 years. Yes. And the people that came after us are now, you know, dealing with higher inflation. They can't afford stuff. They can't afford housing. They can't afford rent. They can't afford food because we stole it all. It was stolen. And to get back to the McKelly quote, there's money enough if you don't steal. So don't steal. Like, that's a basic lesson. It's in every spiritual text, every religious text, every communal text, every form of governance that's ever existed for 100,000 years. One of the basic principles is don't steal. But somehow in 2020, three in the United States, that is still a foreign concept. Stealing is legal. People go to the CVS, the drugstore, and just steal stuff. And there's looting, wholesale looting. And they walk out the door and they're like, well, I'm stealing because stealing is the way, stealing is the way. You can't have capitalism without capital. And mm -hmm. you can't have uh, capital without um, savers. And you don't have savers unless you offer an interest rate on your savings. And that's how you've built civilization for 10,000 years, you know, for thousands of years. So what the England and Britain are saying is that the new CBDC will, as I don't know if you saw me on Tucker Carlson a few weeks ago or not, but the question of the CBDC came up and I did go into this a little bit by saying that they don't want people saving money because they don't want people to have individual sovereignty. They don't want people to have economic well-being. They don't want people to have to be outside of being entirely reliant on the state. Right. So they're going to the CBDC will be heavily monitored and tracked, of course, by the state. And it'll also be like a frequent flyer mile that if you don't spend it within a certain amount of time, it expires because they don't want people to have any savings whatsoever, uh, because that would give them independence of an independence of thought. And politically, they don't want that. It is authoritarianism. It is totalitarianism. That's what CBDCs are all about. That's what Britain is all about. And every time Britain comes out with a statement like we really want to be the crypto, quote unquote, Bitcoin 
center of Europe and the world, you know, I've been saying for years now that that's a false statement. That will never happen in, in Britain. You know, they're always about uh, massively controlling the population from the state down. It's one of the most statist countries in the world, uh, highly, highly regulated. It's not a place of free speech whatsoever or many other freedoms. Uh, that's a misnomer. And uh, so here you have the CBDC, which, as you point out, is basically saying to the population that we don't want you to be in a position where you have an in, the ability to politically take action against us in any kind of independent way. We want you to be entirely dependent on our money printing of the CBDC, which is a surveillance technology. Plus, it, it'll be like the we've mentioned this before, the credit score, the Chinese credit score, social credit score. If you're not uh, completely in sync with what the government wants you to do, your credit score is, goes down and you lose, let's say, access to buy flights on planes. You know, your, your passport expires and things like that. So it's a, it is totalitarianism without a question. And it's not surprising that a country like Britain would be all for totalitarianism. That this is a this is the mindset of this country now, uh, really set for a thousand years. It's never been different there. But it's like they're saying they want to ban bank runs by introducing by replacing money with shit. Now, excuse my language. But in other yes. words, they're, they say we don't we're going to get rid of bank runs because what we're going to give you is something that is a completely digital surveillance technology that we can cancel at any time that you can't save and we dictate how you spend it. So no one, of course, would there wouldn't be a bank run because no one would want that. They're like saying, we're going to ban bank runs because we're going to turn the money into rancid meat that nobody would want, not even a starving dog. That's how we're going to stop bank runs because we're going to turn your money into something that nobody would ever want. Why would you run into the bank and say, give me all my money if that thing that you're running to get is absolutely horrible, rancid garbage? You wouldn't want it. That's their solution to get rid of anything that's of value and whatsoever and replace it with their draconian authoritarian state sponsored terrorism. Capitalism is based on savings. It's based on the community having savings in the bank. That's where the money comes to create a society. Yep. We like to exchange with other people and we like to exchange with something that they in, in, in return can exchange with somebody else. That's the magic of money. It's, it's a language. It's a way to move through time and space. If you replace it with something that has no value whatsoever, you end up with festering, stationary humans shooting up heroin all day and uh, trying to, you know, uh, whatever they can do. The Madonna was a popular subject for Renaissance art. So here we are, yeah. Renaissance 2.0 in El Salvador and yeah. out there in the rest of the world, Renaissance 1.0 is turned into Madonna, the freak show. Yeah. Right. So the Renaissance from 500 years ago is now turned into the reopening of the crypt containing uh, the devils that are pouring out like another. Some of those great Carbaggios, maybe, maybe it's not Carbaggio, but uh, I'm trying to think of a great artist from that period who depicted the the goblins and the gargoyles of hell so uh, so, so so brilliantly and and with such uh, an eye for for terror.